Okay, good evening everyone. Thank you so very much for joining us again for another Bible study this week. Uh, it is such a pleasure to see all of you and uh, in spite of uh, all your schedules and your work, you have spent some time to uh, join us in the fellowship to study uh, the Word of God and to learn more about God and His uh, uh, love. Uh, I believe that the one hour we are going to spend together will be a time of blessing to all of us where uh, God breaks uh, all the barriers to experiencing in Him uh, intimately. I believe that God opens our hearts and minds to receive His revelation and illumination and speaks to us through His uh, uh, servant. This moment, uh, we'll start our Bible study with a word of prayer. Uh, can I request Mr. Sikinda to offer a prayer? Hello. Uh, Uncle, can you, would you please offer a prayer so that we'll start our Bible study? Okay. Loving Father in heaven, we thank you for giving us this opportunity to have fellowship on this Wednesday evening to hear the word of God. In the presence of you, we gather together and hear, open our hearts and minds so that we act accordingly and Enrich the pastor with more words of God. Father, bless all the members of the church. We thank you for all this and close this prayer in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Yeah, I guess our Bible study is an international Bible study now because Amir also joined us. Hi, Amir. Welcome to our uh, uh, Bible study. I hope you and your family Hello. are doing well. We hope you and your family are doing well. Yeah, we're good. Uh, Christina is good, but uh, we're both are well. <laughs> that's, that, we're that's, doing well. Very to, that's very good to hear. Okay, let's move forward in our Bible study as, uh, uh, as we always do. Uh, we will spend 30 minutes of time in uh, studying in which uh, uh, Pastor Dan will uh, lead us through uh, so some lecture or teaching through teachings. And we all are following the GCI uh, booklet, We Believe. I hope all of you have received it. All of you have access to it, either uh, you know through WhatsApp or email. <coughs> I, I guess we sent it to all. Uh, to Amio, Amio, I will email uh, the material that we are using. So for the, this first 30 minutes, we will uh, spend in studying. And then the remaining time, we'll keep it open for the discussions where you, you can uh, feel free to ask questions or make some comments or if you want to add something to what we have already uh, discussed, uh, please feel free to do that. So in case if any of you are not having the material, kindly uh, text me personally in WhatsApp so that I will send the material to you. Okay, and over to Pastor. Thank you, Prabhu. And uh, good evening to all of you. Thank you for joining us for... Uh, this uh, midweek study, and I think this this whole thing came into <laughs> came into being because of the pandemic. Even though we have so many difficulties with the pandemic, and yet uh, uh, there are some spin-offs, uh, some positive developments in spite of it. But uh, like Praveen said, uh, we are using uh, the basic booklet and I'll just show it to you on the screen. It is called We Believe uh, and this is available on our website. So we continue to use this as a guide to direct us as to what must be discussed. Uh, the whole booklet is centered around what uh, GCI uh, continues to hold as our doctrinal position and our doctrinal statement. And uh, so we are doing an in-depth study in each one of those points. Uh, if I can just mention, I think most of you probably have already muted, but uh, just so that there are no extra noises coming, you can stay on mute until of course, we get to the discussion and the Q&A, and then you can ask your question. We are now in section seven. In case you're using the book, it is uh, page 24. 
the title of the study today is the Holy Scripture. So we have finished six sessions sections so far. The last one we discussed was uh, the doctrine of humanity, and we had some very interesting thoughts uh, and questions that we covered in that. Today we are going to the Holy Scriptures. Uh, the what do we understand and believe about the Holy Scriptures and what does the Holy Scriptures tell us about uh, the book itself? Now, like I always do, I will read the question and the answer. That, uh, that is the format in which we have been doing it. Uh, when after reading the answer, I might pick up a few points and make some comments. And so, uh, you must you must always feel free to write down any questions and uh, you can ask those questions and we can have a discussion. Feel free to also comment because some of your comments uh, may be very helpful for all of us. Uh, you may catch something which we have not discussed and that will become very, very helpful for each one of us. Okay, having said that, let's go to the first question in uh, once again section seven. And our study today is the Holy Scriptures. The first question, and you have it on your screen right now. What are the Holy Scriptures? And the answer reads, by God's grace, the Holy Scriptures are sanctified to serve as God's inspired word and faithful witness to Jesus Christ and the gospel. They are the fully reliable record of God's revelation to humanity, culminating in his self-revelation in the incarnate Son. The Bible is therefore foundational to the church and is viewed as infallible in all matters of faith and practice. Uh, as we answer that question, what are the Holy Scriptures? Uh, let me once again pick up uh, just a few points. Uh, from the answer that we have just read. Notice it says, the Bible is therefore foundational to the church. Uh, or, or before I go there, let me just uh, talk about God's revelation. Notice it says, they are the fully reliable record of God's revelation to humanity, culminating uh, in, in his self-revelation in the incarnate son. What we have to understand there is the Bible is a revelation as to who God is and who we are in God. Once again, we always, we always come from that Trinitarian perspective. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. That is the ultimate reality and everything centers around there. And of course, Jesus Christ being the very center of the center. So the Bible is a a revelation of God. And of course, finally, the self-revelation of God in the incarnate Son. Now, some of you, uh, who, uh, especially our senior members, may remember we used to say that the Bible is the instruction manual for mankind. Now, I think we used to say it, and many others probably say it today. And I have... I don't have a problem with that, but I think uh, that can be slightly misleading. You know, God didn't give us just an instruction manual as though we human beings are like some machine and we are to know how to operate this machine. And that becomes, uh, I think, a, a little problematic if you only think of the Bible as an instruction manual. What we have to understand is the Bible reveals who God is and how we as humanity is, are loved by God. In other words, if I can use this phrase, the Bible is actually a love story. I'm sure you have read many novels <laughs> uh, revealing you know, all kinds of romantic uh, stories. 
But the Bible is actually a story, a, a, an ongoing story, uh, beginning with who God is and how, how humanity came into being. And it is a continuing story that will, of course, uh, come into a, a consummation or a culmination, you know, uh, at, the, at the second resurrection. So we have to be careful. We just don't talk about uh, the Bible being an instruction manual. Even though there are instructions, we have to keep in mind. Uh, we have to listen. We have to read the scriptures to see what it tells us with regards to our lifestyle and how we need to live our lives. But let us not reduce it to just an instruction manual. Remember, it's a revelation. It's a story. It is telling us about God. It's telling us about who we are. All right. It, the, um, and and what, is, what is another very important aspect is it's a witness to Jesus Christ. See? It is giving us and telling us who Jesus Christ finally is. Because he becomes the center, like we say in GCI, the center of the center. Jesus Christ is the central focus of the scriptures it's not just you know some rules and regulations and laws given to us and then god says okay just keep it that is not what the bible is the bible is much much more than just that so when we understand the bible from the perspective we have discussed the answer also i'll pick up another point there the bible is therefore foundational to the church and is viewed as infallible in all matters of faith and practice. So why is the Bible foundational for the church? It's because of what we have just said, you know, in, in terms of it reveals who God is. It reveals uh, who Jesus Christ is. Uh, it's a witness to what Christ is doing for us. And finally, it's infallible in all matters of faith and practice. Now, if you can use the instruction manual, yes, it is also gives us how we must practice or how we must have a lifestyle, what kind of a lifestyle we must have. So all of those things are then included. Okay, let's move to the second uh, question. Having understood the very basic and the most important purpose as far as the Holy Scriptures, the second question asks, what is in the Holy Scriptures? Now, of course, this is a question that uh, is uh, very self-evident, but let me just go ahead and read it nevertheless. The Bible is made up of 66 books, 39 in the Old Testament and 27 in the New, New Testament. The Old Testament contains the record of God's creation of all things, the revelation of God's design and provision for humanity. Humankind's original disobedience, God's covenant with Abraham, God's calling of Israel to be his people, God's law, God's wisdom, God's saving deeds, and the teaching of God's prophets who present God's promises. All right. It goes on to say the Old Testament points to Jesus, revealing God's intention to redeem and reconcile the world through Christ in fulfillment of God's promises. Okay, so that's quite a bit with regards to the Old Testament. Then it continues to talk about the New Testament. The New Testament contains the record of Jesus, birth, life, ministry, death, resurrection, and ascension. The church's early ministry, the teaching of the apostles, and finally the revelation of Christ's return and the fullness of his eternal kingdom. The New Testament shows us God's ultimate purpose, purposes and their consummation. The word consummation means the final, uh, you know, ushering of the very purpose of God for human beings. All right. I think most of what we just read is very self-evident, but I think it also helps us to recognize how the Bible is much more than just rules and regulations and instruction manual. It contains rules and regulations, but notice 
the tremendous story flow of how God brings uh, humanity into existence and how that whole process of redemption takes place. Now, uh, one important point, if I may just mention here, is notice the very first uh, sentence says, the Bible is made up of 66 books, 39 in the old and 27 in the new. Now, there is a need for us to say that because we believe this is the final canon of scripture. The word canon means a standard, right? In other words, uh, the Bible cannot be added to. There are no other books that we can add and say is part of scripture. Uh, the, this is the final canon as that as was uh, finalized you know, by the early church. Now, there are many other books that people talk about. You probably know that there is a book called the Apocrypha, which is added to the scriptures, I mean, the, to the Bible, as many other books. But the early church did not accept that as inspired word of God. So we stick to the 66 books. Uh, the church as GCI, we in GCI remain faithful to these uh, 66 books as the inspired word of God. And we at this moment cannot accept any other additions to it. Okay, so that is one important thing uh, we, I needed to mention. One more point before we move to the next one. The, in the answer, it also says the Old Testament points to Jesus. Points to Jesus. Now that's a, an important aspect uh, for us to pick up. Uh, the Old Testament is a final, it, it moves into a revelation of who Jesus Christ is. It prophesied about Jesus. And Jesus then is a fulfillment of all that was written in the Old Testament. You could say the Old Covenant. Okay. So uh, that is an, uh, an important point to make with regards to. Uh, why we have the Old Testament and why we have the New Testament. Now, there are many, uh, there, are, there could be many, you know, uh, schools of thought that the old, the people stop with the Old Testament. For example, the Jews today do not accept the New Testament. They stop with the Old Testament. They believe that uh, that is inspired scripture. And so, uh, they do not go beyond that. And, uh, and that is one of the reasons why they have not been able to recognize who the Messiah is. The scriptures talk about the Messiah. Okay. So that is uh, point, uh, question two. Let's move now to question three. Um, as we understand, what are the holy scriptures and uh, how it is a a love story, God's love for humanity and his redemptive process, bringing humanity into, you know, communion with him. We understood how the Old Testament and the New Testament forms the canon of scripture. Uh, there cannot be any addition to that. The third question asks, how are the Old Testament and the New Testament related? Let us read the answer and make some comments. <clears throat> <laughs> the Old Testament shows us God's covenant promises revealed first to Abraham, <clears throat> then to Israel. The New Testament reveals to the renewed people of God, that is the church, the ultimate fulfillment of those covenant promises. <clears throat> the Old Testament prepared the people of God to recognize and receive the fulfillment of God's word in Jesus Christ. It also shows how the people of God were to live by faith in the promises of God as Israel, a particular chosen people. The New Testament shows the church how to live by faith after the fulfillment of those promises by Jesus Christ and in hope of their ultimate consummation upon Christ's bodily return. All right. 
Now, uh, once again, just a few comments. How are the old and the new related? Uh, okay. I just want to uh, reiterate, I think I mentioned it earlier too. The old and the new, you know, or rather I should say the New Testament completes the old. All right. You cannot left be, be, you know, stop with the old. If you stop with the old, you're left hanging. You don't know what the old, how was the old, you know, fulfilled. How was the old covenant fulfilled? When you begin to see the New Testament and when you see Jesus Christ in it, uh, and of course, and what Christ accomplished and did, then you see the tremendous connection. They are tremendously related. Uh, without the new, the old will be left hanging. And without the old, the new uh, will not make the kind of sense it will make when you add the old. All right. So they go as a complete document. And I think that was inspired by the Holy Spirit. It is only when you put the two, then you begin to see it as a complete document. Uh, if you're hearing a dog barking, forgive me. That is my dog in the yard. So uh, somebody is probably at the door. So. Okay. Uh, let me see if there's any other points. Um, yeah, another point I'd like to pick up from that answer is, it says the Old Testament prepared the people of God to recognize and receive the fulfillment of God's word in Jesus Christ. See, the Old Testament was a preparation for God's people, Israel in particular, and through Israel so that they could be a blessing to others. They were supposed to bring the knowledge of how this is going to be fulfilled, you know, by the coming Messiah in Jesus Christ. And that is why the new becomes so very important. It is only in Jesus we fully understand all the prophecies and all the, even the laws, the way it was given to Israel. We begin to understand that better when we have Jesus. So that is the reason why the, those who just stuck, stick with the old are not able to move ahead and put the picture together. They cannot get a complete picture if the old is not, uh, you know, add, or rather the new is not added to the old. All right. Okay, I think uh, we have established the connection between the old and the new. Much more can be said, but then... Uh, uh, we will leave it at that. If you should have any questions, feel free to ask. Let's move on now to the fourth question. And the fourth question reads, what does it mean that the Holy Scriptures are inspired? That, of course, is a huge subject. And uh, I will make some uh, extensive comments there. But we believe the Holy Scriptures are inspired, right? Uh, let's read the answer and then we'll come back and pick up a few thoughts. Here the answer says, it means that, that is the inspiration of scripture, means that the Bible is God-breathed. The Holy Scriptures were given by the Holy Spirit through prophets and apostles and were preserved by the Spirit as the revelation of God and His act, His acts in human history. They are not simply a collection of human opinion. Jesus gave his apostles authority to speak and teach for him and a unique gifting from the spirit to do so. Okay. So there's a, a lot that can be said about the inspiration of scripture. Uh, let me just... Uh, read a few thoughts for you. Uh, remember, the scriptures are inspired, like it says, by the Holy Spirit. It is God-breathed. Uh, when you talk about God-breathed, you know, the breath of God gives life. You remember when Adam was 
uh, formed from the dust of the ground. He breathed into him, you know, the breath of life. And so it almost seems to tell me that uh, the Bible is a, is a you know, it, it has life in it. Uh, if I could say, maybe I should make a, a contract. It is not just an intellectual document. It is not just a opinion of human beings like was like we read. It is not just some collection of thoughts of people that had some experience. You know, there is an entire uh, series of books that are just experiences of human beings uh, that does not necessarily have a divine element in it. But the Bible is not like that. The Bible has a human element and a divine element. We'll come to that a little bit more, a little later. So uh, the writers of the Bible were inspired, which, uh, uh, you know, which means moved by the Holy Spirit. And the writings are inspired as if breathed or spoken by God. Right? So it is a true word of what God wants us to understand about himself. Now, many of us know the scripture in 2 Timothy chapter 3 verses 16 and 17. I'll just quickly read that just so that we get a picture of uh, how uh, the Bible talks about this inspiration. 2 Timothy chapter 3 uh, and verse 16 and 17. It says, all scripture is God-breathed, uh, this is the NIV, NIV version, and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, verse 17, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. So this breathing of God, of the scripture, makes it useful for teaching and for rebuking. Uh, in other words, for us to be instructed, for us to be corrected, and for a training in the righteous uh, aspects of life. And we then as servants of God may be thoroughly equipped. All right. So uh, that, uh, the, 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 in, the scriptures being inspired provides a dynamic, uh, what do you say, life in it as we read it you know the uh, there are scriptures which talks about the scriptures being like the soul uh, like a sword what does a sword do it can cut you know it we even i think in the in the book of revelation it talks about the double edged sword it can cut in other words the scriptures were meant to cut through you know untruth the scriptures were meant to cut through all the falsity and bring us the truth. The scriptures were meant to, uh, not just an, as an intellectual document, but bring change, bring redemption, bring an understanding, a spiritual understanding that goes beyond our physical realm. So uh, that is perhaps some ways I can explain to you this whole aspect of uh, the scriptures being God breathed. Let me also mention Jesus used the Old Testament as thoroughly reliable words of God. You remember Jesus quoted from the Old Testament. So in other words, Jesus validated the Old Testament as authoritative. Why would he do that? Because Jesus knew that the Old Testament was inspired of God. Now, the Bible reveals truths about God and about what God does so that we may know God and have a relationship with God. Now, that's the whole purpose. The whole purpose for this document, for the old and the new to remain as a book and given to humanity is so that finally we are knowing God knowing about what God is doing so that it can facilitate a relationship with him. Now, something very important before we move on. You have 
we talk about the bible being the word of god okay the written word of god now we also know there is a living word of god and we i'm sure recognize it as jesus christ our lord right now interestingly enough the bible is called the written word of god in other words it's written and it's the word of god in other words there is a divine element to it and there is a human element to it the bible is not just a dictation like some other holy books might you know claim to be god did not decide to dictate every last word that is to be written in the bible he allowed human beings to write it to understand certain aspects that god is revealing and write it in their own you know style <clears throat> in their own way of course inspired by the holy spirit so the bible like i said is divine and human if it is only divine if it is like a book that is given from the heavens and i think some some groups might claim that their book came from the heaven how could anybody understand it? you know if there is no human touch to the bible we as human beings will not understand an entirely divine uh you know uh, uh, book that is given from the heaven now on the other hand if it is only human if it is only a human recording of experience then there is no divinity in it and then you are not hearing the voice of god so the point i want to make is this to understand the communication of god to understand the revelation of god it must be both divine and human god must breathe into it god must inspire it but he must allow human beings to write it in uh, in their own you know understanding of concepts and the language that they speak let me bring an interesting point here do you know that is why jesus christ is both human and divine jesus christ is fully human and fully god and we are able to understand jesus see him and be able to recognize uh both divinity and humanity because jesus was both human and divine that is the plan of god that is how god designed it god wanted a divine element as well as the human he combines the both that's why we believe the bible is inspired by the holy spirit written by human beings okay all right so that is basically the inspiration let me just uh, see if there are any other points we can pick up um okay so that's basically the inspiration that we can talk about and i thought it was very interesting once again uh we might uh, discuss more of that as we go along let me just see what uh, time we are doing uh, let me just read one more thought and then we will open it up for question and answer okay so let's go to question number 5 uh the question 5 in our booklet reads what does it mean that the holy spirit or rather the holy scriptures are the written word of god we just discussed that but uh let's pick up what the answer is here what does it mean that the holy scriptures are the written word of god the and the answer reads we are reading question 5 because the bible is inspired by the holy spirit it is rightly called the written word of god though god is revealed to us in his mighty works including the incarnation of our lord jesus christ the living word of god god's works and will are made known to us through the inspired words of scripture the written word so the written word of god is to be understood and interpreted as the word that belongs to jesus christ who personally appointed authoritative representatives to preach and preserve in writing 
an authorized witness to him, empowered by the Holy Spirit. Uh, well, basically, uh, what we can understand is, it is the written word of God. It says, uh, because it is inspired by the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is God. So that is why we call it the written word of God. When it's an inspiration by the Holy Spirit, who is God, it is the written word of God. And another point is the written word of God is to be understood and interpreted as the word that belongs to Jesus Christ. In other words, uh, Jesus Christ as the living word and the written word are consistent. There is no contradiction between what is the written word of God and in Jesus Christ who is the living word of God. Okay, uh, they are both consistent. In other words, uh, everything about Jesus is true. Even as the, wit the Holy Scriptures witness is, witness it, uh, witnesses Jesus Christ. There is nothing that Jesus does that is inconsistent with the scripture. And that is what we ought to understand. Uh, so you cannot read the scriptures and then find something inconsistent with what Jesus is saying or doing. Uh, everything falls into place because ultimately, of course, the living word of God is the very author of uh, the written word. Okay. I think we'll stop there. We maybe have about little more than 15 minutes. Let's just, uh, once again, uh, let me bring some thoughts from you, and uh, comments that you might have. Uh, let me go to the gallery view here. I see you all, there you are. Any thoughts or questions, comments you'd like to make with regards to the Holy Scriptures? This is, uh, this might take about maybe at least one more session, if not a third session, because there are a number of questions we got to deal with. Okay, the floor is yours. Unmute yourself in case you are uh, speaking. Can you hear me? Yes, Bertie, go ahead. Yeah, this uh, the written word of God. Uh, when you're when you're writing the term, the written word of God, is it? Uh, would it be uh, inappropriate, or would it be okay to put the capital W when you're writing, mentioning uh, the written word of God? <laughs> uh, well, uh, uh, now I, I suppose if you are using it in some formal literature. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, you may want to consider some grammatical perspectives, but I let me see. Um, when we uh, in, in our booklet, it's not capitalized. W is not capitalized. Okay, okay. So the word written is uh, is uh, focusing on the action of writing by human being. Yes. yes. But it is of God, which is an inspiration that we understand is of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. Interesting. Uh, Praveen, what, if you have any thoughts, you can add. Yes, Bertie, you uh, had another uh, thought? Yeah, we have been, as you know, our old teachings uh, uh, mentions about the festivals and, uh, you know, some other aspects of the Old Testament, which yes. now we know how it, how it, uh, 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 how it, uh, it agrees and harmonizes with the New Testament uh, teachings of Jesus Christ. Do you think uh, these people who do not have any idea of the Old Testament uh, are somewhat uh, missing out on something? Um, I, 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 yeah, I would definitely think so. If, um, if people have no knowledge of the Old Testament and the Old Covenant, then I think uh, they don't get the full picture there as to what who Jesus is and the fact that he has come to fulfill many of the predictions and the prophecies of the old. 
so obviously there is going to be a gap in their understanding uh now you talked specifically about festivals and i think you rightly mentioned that we have seen its fulfillment right and it is the, the fulfillment is in jesus christ um uh, when we understand and put all those to uh, put all those together we get a, a proper and a good story flow which would be missing if there is no knowledge of uh, what the old was obviously i think i could say that yes i'm not sure if, uh, if there was any other question that uh, went along with it I, i i'm not sure i hope i have understood your question correctly yes yes <laughs> one more just one more question yes uh, jesus kept the law jesus kept the law uh, so uh, of course we have christ in us who Uh, completes us and in christ of course we come under the higher law of christ uh, and uh, we uh, are christ like and we are obedient to the uh, you know uh, live lawfully because of christ christ uh, his the totality of christ is given to us and we know but when you say christ has kept the law does it mean that he observed the uh, all the laws that were uh, to be kept before christ came which were uh, which were need, which were required the, for the people to observe the jesus christ observed that okay you are now getting into a subject which is once again another huge uh, you know subject that that no, just, <laughs> just just yeah sorry you can just say it in simple terms it's okay. yeah right because the law and how we understand it and how you know very clearly the new testament says he's come to fulfill and not to abrogate not to cancel or to take away uh yes jesus christ fulfilled everything about the law yeah. uh, and when you say the law the law is much more than just some you know rules and regulation yes uh, <laughs> the law is, in one sense was pointing to certain things for example it is you know it is only through the law we know about sin correct yes. that's what the scriptures tell us the law helps us to understand what sin is yes and how did jesus what what did jesus do to bring that sense of fulfillment well he handled sin in other words he was able to address the law in yes. such a manner where sin has been uh you know dealt with yes so there in once again there are so many aspects to that and uh, we will come to that but even i'm sure we are going to also study the law mm-hmm. and we will uh, make a m- much more comprehensive study of that later yeah. on no. but yes yeah, don't don't, fulfill. Yeah, don't 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 mistake me for saying that we need to keep the law i don't mean that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i'm just saying that jesus christ did it uh, to, to uh, you know because uh, uh he is the giver of the law and that uh, it was required for the people you know for his for his old covenant people israel to observe it so jesus christ observed it beautifully but we come in christ we are now to follow christ and we receive christ he is our rest and he leads us in uh, lawfully he leads us in doing the right thing and uh, you know making us right in his holiness all because of christ and he uh, he uh, what you call that redeemed us by uh, by living life all that we face the temptations and all that we sort of uh, go through life he did it and he is the second adam he is the new man you know and we are brought into him yeah so okay. he 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 proved it that in flesh and blood he has uh, provided uh, the obedience and yieldedness to god and live live the life of love and truth and that uh, he did it uh, uh, which god required for man to you know to uh, in his relationship with god so christ right. has done it beautifully and that he is the new creation and we are called uh, to uh, we, are, we are received in christ and we are a new creation along with him he is the head we are the body yeah anyway uh, like i said there are many more things to say about that which we will come to later okay okay thanks buddy any other thoughts uh, or pravin you want to add something to what was discussed uh, nothing much pastor because we have few more uh, uh, 
uh, at least one more session is left probably yes. they would come uh, in the next session right so i really don't want to mess up here <laughs> okay. uh, from but only thing is we can say only from what we have discussed what we have discussed uh, from that everything is very clear to me okay. it was nice Right. Uh, one small clarification I wanted to add. Most of the people, uh, when we talk about the 66 books, inspired scripture, they bring up the topic of Catholics. Catholics are having more books there, which you mentioned as Apocrypha. Uh, in reality, as I'm talking about uh, their um, theological belief. Okay, So even Catholics believe in the 66 books theologically. They don't believe in the Apocrypha. Uh, that's why in the Bible on the cover itself it would be written. It doesn't say it's uh, inspired scripture of God or not. It says uh, the Bible with deuterocanonical books. Uh, these are not canonical. These are deuterocanonical which are uh, helpful to understand. So uh, most of the times uh, so many evangelicals bash on uh, Catholics saying you got a wrong Bible and all. Let us not uh, do that. From Jesus, that we will not do that because they are also believing in 66 books. The remaining apocrypha, they are mentioning it. Of course, uh, when it comes to the uh, like you know, to lay people, they may not have the proper understanding. Of it. So let us acknowledge that as well. Okay. I think that's, a, that's an interesting point. Uh, we need to recognize that. Uh, uh, the, the, the Catholic Church endorses the 66 books. Uh, and like you rightly said, uh, uh, did you say that they do make a distinction in the sense that they don't believe the inspiration of the Apocrypha? That's why they mentioned mm -hmm. on the Bible, okay. it's a title, and the cover itself, it will be written with deuterocanonical books. Yes. Deuterocanonical itself means it is not canonical. Yeah, it's outside the canon. Sounds, uh, yeah, that's what. Uh, so we have to recognize it and uh, we will lose them. We will lose our brethren if we just bash on them. You are believing in wrong by the best. Right. Uh, just one more uh, thing. Uh, Mr. Zechariah, can I speak? Yes, go ahead. Uh, you know, Gideon's international, Gideon's uh, group, they, uh, uh, they, they give out uh, the Old Testament, uh, pocket edition of the uh, New Testament. And, uh, you know, so more you know, to uh, hospitals, to education institutions, yes. etc. Gideons. Uh, uh, yes, we know we come. We are the we we follow the New Testament. We come under, uh, you know, we come under the New Testament, and we Christ is central, and Christ fulfills the Old Testament prophecies, etc. But uh, do you think uh, they needed to add? And sometimes they they also add uh, in the New Testament pocket edition. They add, uh, they add Proverbs and uh, Psalms, which yes. is very helpful, uh, you know, uh, towards the end. But uh, do you, uh, uh, I mean, I was wondering, like, uh, why uh, why would they not uh, give also the Old Testament? <laughs> uh, was it uh, like, uh, okay. why, why have they given the, you know, they give it out free, the New Testament pocket edition, uh, and they have not, that is essential and we need to live by it. But what about the Old Testament? Was there any the reason for them not to include, like, you know, give it out as a handy book, as a as something, as a reference book, something for them, you know? Just like they gave out the New Testament, why not? Why have they left out the Old Testament? Is there any reason for that? Yeah, uh, I think uh, your question is why, uh, you know, uh, they have not included the Old. Yes. Uh, yeah, it's a very good question. I I, I have not really um, thought about it, but uh, <laughs> uh, obviously, I think uh, there could be uh, you know monetary reasons for that. It's diffi more difficult to print the full Bible. But yeah. on the other hand, maybe they think that the New Testament is sufficient, and to some extent, like you yourself saying, that yes, at least it introduces us to Jesus Christ. But yeah. if we are going to want to get the full story, obviously we need the Old Testament, right? So, uh, uh, I would, I, I mean, I would prefer that the old, the entire Bible is given, but uh, the New Testament 
you know if there's nothing else ex- you know at least that i don't know uh, how else to explain of course i i i i do not understand or rather i do not know why the gideons would do that do they do they have a particular theology behind it i have not studied that anybody knows about that why the gideons only give the new Raveen Raveen Raveen. 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 No, not much these are internal issues of gideon so perhaps uh, that may not, that may not be something uh, uh, you know we 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 are we are focusing now yeah okay right. yeah that's uh, their internal issues yes yes maybe we will uh, we'll touch upon that maybe next time a little bit more there may be some come uh, references to the old and the new coming together good i think we just have a few minutes left uh, in case you would like to uh, about 5 minutes left uh, any other comments or thoughts you'd like to share with us i've always mentioned if you have a question that comes later you can you're most welcome to send it to me and then uh, we will get back to you with an answer right so uh, i know it's a little pressured at this moment because you probably have to think a little bit uh, and but feel free to even write after the session is over um, you have one, no uh, yeah one thing uh, with the gideons uh, while giving uh, in their new testament pocket edition it's good of them to include psalms and proverbs it really helpful okay let me just add one more thought uh, if you don't have any comments uh, and then we'll end with this uh, okay uh, the thought is god allowed the divine message to be given now this is not part of the book i was just picking up some thoughts from somewhere else god allowed the divine message to be given in the phraseology of the human authors right just as jesus was god in human form the bible is god's word in human words i thought uh, just make that a comment uh, once again god deciding to use human author to bring the human element uh, so that we would be able to relate better and but the bible also has the divine inspiration uh, you know to bring the divine you know understanding to human being okay so i'll just mention that okay having said that yes pravin you have thought yeah one thought uh, from yeah, in addition to what you have already said previously yes. that is about the scripture is a witness to jesus christ and it's also a witness to god it reveals uh, about god but especially when we are reading the old testament we also should keep it in our mind that uh, uh, it is a true witness to god and jesus so it tells what is right about god and it tells what is wrong about god <coughs> what is meant by the, in in doing that only <coughs> in doing that only scripture can be a true witness for example in the old testament it is written uh, in uh, book of exodus i will bring the sin of the fathers unto four generations ezekiel comes and ezekiel says i will pray to ezekiel uh, ezekiel says god say to ezekiel it says i will not bring the sin of the fathers unto children okay so who is right ezekiel is right or moses is right the reality is during the moses time there was an understanding moses understood god and he expressed god in his uh, in his on understanding as we said it it has both human element and th- there was a small difficult uh, i mean a clarification required regarding certain topics which god clarified later one small great example we can take is book of job uh, job's friends are there eliphaz bildad and all they sp- they all of them spoke about god and there were, were uh, some of the discourses were two chapters or crossing two chapters okay and at the end god comes and says what job's friend said they, they did not speak what is right about me mm-hmm. so 
so in the beginning it explains what people are believing about god if there are anything wrong later god was clarifying those so scripture in scripture god uh, the scripture gives a true witness about god telling what is right about god and what is wrong about god also so let us not keep think that witness means it should speak only right about god it tells or well, if, if, if it, it shows what is wrong about god and it tells this see so and so place it is spo was, was spoken that is wrong be aware of it so when we read the scripture we need to take the entire scripture into the context and the entire scripture into consideration and then make a, a form of our concepts so without that we cannot do taking scriptures here and there and say oh this is what god is that's a problem with uh, we call it uh, concord concordance method okay there are certain problems with it so we should be careful about that yeah the apparent contradictions are always a problem but maybe we can uh, discuss some of those uh, and uh, understand it of course when you mentioned what is right about god what is wrong about god maybe uh, <laughs> maybe you can rephrase that a little bit otherwise it might give the wrong picture what yeah, is wrong about god yeah i don't mean scripture tells wrong about god as we said scripture contains both god divine and human uh, uh, what we will call uh, in uh, you know, what what we will call it both divine and human people uh, human are involved in writing it god inspired yeah. and he, he said uh, he let us free she he said us we write uh, the way you understood okay so they they wrote it yes. the way they understood right the revelation of god so right. there are certain places they might have they, there are some gray areas like they where they did not understand well those right. things god was clarifying later yes so oh. everywhere god god made sure no mistake is communicated to us if there are any wrong mistakes in people's understanding he was rectifying them later yes That's what uh, i was trying to correct so i think uh, <laughs> uh, human understanding uh is faulty you know is in is fallible and so god has to bring clarifications later and of course jesus christ brings the final clarification okay having said that uh we thank you for joining today let us end with a prayer and i was wondering bertie can you lead us in a closing prayer yeah sure mm -hmm. father in heaven we just want to thank you for this time of bible study lord where we hear your word where you prepare our hearts to receive your word you inspire a servant to teach us your word lord help us to be mindful of the things of god help us lord to be inspired empowered enable lord to live uh, according to your word which is jesus christ lord the written word the living word lord you are loving and you are truthful so that we can be confident that we are believing the truth and we need your help lord in christ in the holy spirit to uh, walk in uh, uh, to walk and to fulfill your purpose for us in Christ Jesus we just want to thank you for this time lord we, it's a beautiful time and uh, we just want to thank you lord for working with our lives lord uh, continue to be uh, working with our lives lord and conforming us more and more to Christ help us with the love that you lord the triune god has help us lord for your call us to be a oneness lord you've called us to newness and we just want to thank you lord that uh, you have called us and lord that uh, we humbly pray help us lord to be uh, yes called chosen but to be faithful to the end father we just thank you for this time and thank you for your servants who teach us who preach to us and uh, the fellowship that we enjoy with your people we pray all this help us lord and bring us to the time of uh, worship on sunday Uh, when we come together again we pray this father in in the blessed and glorious name of a great god and savior jesus christ amen